Capricorn friends and welcome to your horoscope for August of 2020 where Capricorn this month I feel like it just wraps it up like every month I get one sign that I feel like is just very straightforward let's do this kind of energy so I look forward to breaking that all down for you in just a second but first I want to let you know that the eat and greets will continue on this month they are going beautifully and in fact we've got people lined up until the end of the year and crossing into 2021 so it's very exciting this month we will welcome Glenn Mitchell Kay Taylor Kathy Rose Susan Miller Laura Nalbandian will be here as well as Clarissa Dolphin will be here to talk about vibrational astrology since there was such a huge response to that we're going to bring her in and and see what she has to share with us as well August 7th through the 9th I will be a part of the astrology summit for power and purpose and I hope that you will come and join it is free 18 beautiful astrologers getting together talking about the sky talking about how you can use it plus I don't know about you but I find around August time frame I'm like Let's put some little energy in the tank, right? Like what's next, but let's be inspired and pumped up a little bit. So if you're looking for a little encouragement, maybe some different ideas, maybe just to get out of your box, it's a beautiful summit. I hope you will come and attend virtually and um, join us. The link's in the description box down below to get signed up. All right, Capricorn, let's get into what is going on this month. Now, first of all, at the beginning of the month, August 3rd, We've got a full moon happening in the energy of Aquarius. So just in your next door neighbor there. Now the full moon says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. There's a shift that needs to be made here. And there's going to be so much light shown down on the situations in your second house, which are finances, self-esteem, worth and values and they're what you what do you own what do you possess what do you value how do you value yourself as well as your creative talents all of these things start to take a shift now it is a full moon so certainly you could see money going out more quickly than you thought it would or you can see that something is going to cost a little bit more than you were thinking it was going to but at the same time you could also see depending on where you are Capricorn you could see that you've got a creative talent or you found a way to make some passive income that is actually quite quite good for you now in the energy of Aquarius one of the other things I think of is where we get the opportunity at this moon to look at maybe where do you need to come at your second house area with a little bit more of an unconventional approach right where do you need to take some behaviors that are maybe not so earth sign, not so Capricorn, maybe a little bit more Aquarian, and they actually lead you to some success on the other side. Aquarius is a really social energy, so maybe you're even getting those ideas or those new behaviors or those new thoughts online or in a social sphere as well. Because remember, people organizations all of these things that can give you information to help you be successful they definitely have a lot of value on the fifth we've got mercury entering into the energy of leo and i have to tell you between mercury moving into leo and then having the new moon in leo later in the month in the eighth house for you capricorn the word that just keeps coming up for me is detox purge and detox it is time to flush out pay down the debt do whatever it is that clears your space mentally, physically, psychologically, emotionally. Let it go. It is time to get rid of it, especially the things that clog you from doing you, from being you, from expressing your unique self, from expressing the message or promoting your message. This is the energy of Leo as well. So one of the things I do think of is, you know, are there changes, are there purges or some really big shifts? that are happening with children. And I do think Capricorn too, in this energy, I keep seeing it looks like a disconnection from maybe a family member. This could even be a disconnection from a child, right? You know, does that mean you're having a baby? Does that mean you need to disconnect from something going on with a child in some way, shape or form? But this is certainly an energy this month that I feel like the word detox is very, very much upon you. Mercury and Leo is also great here in a collaborative sense. If you've got your message, you're ready to share it you're ready to put it out there this eighth house is nice because it'll connect you with other people who want to help share your message as well on the seventh we see venus moving into the energy of cancer so just across the street so we know it's going to light up the seventh house and this will start to have the relational feel the seventh house is not just marriage 
although we do put marriage in there, but conscious chosen relationships are what are in the seventh house here. So did you, your relationship with you with you, your relationship with you and a power greater than yourself, a contract, your open enemies live in your seventh house, but you know about them, right? So Venus here in the seventh house, first of all, is going to bring some harmony and bring some benefit to your relationships, kind of smooth some things over, right? Which is a beautiful energy, a beautiful salve to have over there. You've had all of the Saturnian energy, Jupiter, Pluto working through you and on you, so you are changed, Capricorn. So at this point in the year, as we see Venus come over here into your relationship zone, it's like, who and how are you showing up? right? Is there a romance, a new love that comes into your life, a new significant relationship that Venus just pulls in here gently and is able to give benefit to? This would also be a really good energy too. Actually, it would be beneficial to you potentially um, in a financial way or in, even in a relationship way if you were going through a divorce or some kind of contract conflict. This energy will help to smooth that forward. On the 15th, Uranus is going to take a retrograde in the energy of Taurus, a fellow Earth energy. So this is in the fifth house where we have joy, we have play, we have children, we have any areas you take a risk, maybe that business that you're running or that business you would like to run. As Uranus retrogrades in this area until January of 2021, what you're going to do is go back over this area. And the number one question I feel like Uranus and Taurus asks you is what you need to do to be financially free. What do you need to do in this area to be financially free? Maybe you got to take some of those unprecedented, unconventional actions for yourself. Maybe you got to go back and let Uranus shake out what is just not able to work here for you anymore because it seems like it's working, Taurus. It seems like this is a good fixed thing and it's actually just holding you down and you have no freedom and you have no peace with it. Now, other ways that you can use this Uranian energy here is truly where is it just time to innovate? Either way, the goal of the Uranian retrograde is going to be to provide an area of freedom for you here. And again, there's that energy of the fifth house with detaching from children or something like that in some way. On the 19th, we've got that new moon happening in the energy of Leo, lighting up the eighth house space. So plant your seeds of intention here. It's the darkest point and cycle of uh, in the cycle of the moon. So you're planting your seeds of intention here to detox, to purge, to play, pay down the debt, to make these solid um, collaborations and connections that allow you to be you, to be bold, to be brave, to usher in some kind of leadership, but you don't exactly know what they're going to look like for sure. So you plant your seeds of intention here at this particular time to clear the way and allow the energies to help you. On the 20th, we see Mercury moving into the energy of Virgo where he's at home, he's comfortable, so full power and full steam ahead here. And then on the 22nd, we see the sun joining this Mercury energy. Now, the sun and Mercury together can be a lot of thinking. There's a lot going on. There's motivation, light, heat, life, vitality, plus all the thoughts, right? So in the energy of Virgo lighting up your ninth house, this is a beautiful space where Virgo's going to help you get your ninth house life organized and in order. It's an absolutely brilliant use of Virgo energy. So in your training, in your education, in any area where you wanted to publish, market, broadcast, put yourself out there in some way. Also, I think that this is a time where we're going to come into the season for you, Capricorn, as we come to the end of the month and run to September, where there's just a really big shift in your faith and in your thought process and in your beliefs because things that have happened in the beginning part of the month that have literally just changed you like that core level changed you and Virgo here shows up as the healer shows up as the servant and shows up as a helper and this may also be a capacity that you are taking on where you're teaching or you're helping someone else learn as well so this ninth house space being about the expansion that can be international business that can be faith that can be literal training and broadcasting but whatever it is Virgo is showing you step by step, piece by piece, detail by detail, the way to get this area organized and in, in some kind of ship shape so that you can do something really beautiful and productive in the material world 
with it. I think it's going to be a fabulous month, Capricorn. I really, really do. I think there's a lot you can get done, and I look forward to seeing what happens and who you become as August makes its way and falls off the scene and we roll towards September. All right, Capricorns, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I love you a ton, and I look forward to seeing you next month. Bye, Caps.